Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for our second um, video on watercolor painting. Um, I just wanted to let you know before we get started, there's actually two videos um, today because my camera dropped halfway through the first video. So we'll have two videos that's right back to back. Um, other than that, thanks for joining us. Hopefully you'll have fun. Again, there was no kit for this program. This is just a demo. Next month we'll be back to our regularly scheduled um, kits that we normally do. So make sure you um, like and follow Rawlings page for that and dev definitely double check on the Pueblo Library website um, so that you can register for those programs next month. Uh, there's one this week too that should also be registration. So if you pop on there and check, there should be a stamping program with Shannon from Zillin Stampers that you can register for kits for. So definitely take a peek for that. All right, without any further ado, I'll go ahead and get this video started and then I'll probably just try to transition to the second video real quick. All right, here we go. Hi everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today for the second part of our watercolor painting class. Um, here's the painting that we were working on last time. Everything has dried, so you can see how pretty those watercolor pigments um, blend into each other. And we're going to just start leaping right in to flood the rest of this. So we're going to start here with this edge, this uh, hill in the background, and we'll do the tree and the trunk. And hopefully by then the, the paint will have dried enough that we can even add some little details. Um, little details, if we don't get to them, we'll just do on a third session. So I've got my watercolors here, my awesome watercolor set that I just somehow managed just to get stuck. Um, last time we used our greens. We're going to continue to do that, the gray down here. Um, and then we may mix in a little of these browns that are in through this part of the palette for tree trunks and things like that. So let's get started. I'm going to, with my water here and my nice paintbrush, go ahead and flood this section of the can of watercolor paper here um, with just plain old straight water, just like we did last time. And if you remember, we're gonna go up to the edge of our pencil lines, but we're not going to go over them. That way we're controlling again where um, the paint is going. So you see, I got a couple little splotches here on the canvas and as we paint they're actually going to disappear. Um, watercolor paint is super duper forgiving like that. Um, if you can get it while it's wet or just kind of leave it to sit, you'll be able to get um, the paint off of it or paint over it easily. And you don't need to stress too much about it. I think my favorite part about watercolor painting is that you're really kind of just wanting to paint um, an idea of something. Now, if you can lose yourself from the thought that this has to be perfect and really start going into the fact that you're maybe capturing a moment of color or a quick image of something that you see, it may not be the quickest painting. I mean, if I'm doing a complex watercolor, it takes me a couple of hours, but it's still going to be so much quicker than um, like an acrylic paint and definitely an oil paint because oil paint has to cure and uh, oil paint, believe it or not, is not completely cured for somewhere close to a year. All right, so this is our darker tree. So when we make our colors, I'm going to start with that base green that we used before, which is this one. I'm going to get it nice and wet. And I'm going to put that wet paint, that wash, um, into my palette over here. And I guess I think that this is why I really like having like the brick pigments is because you really are not wasting any paint. You can use the tube of watercolor paint, but I feel like you don't have as much control over how much you're squeezing out and how much you use. And that's, that's not perfect for me. So I don't like it. And this is a green right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and use a bit of that green. So it's going to make it a little bit darker. 
put that in my palette over here. And let those colors mix themselves together a little bit and then we're gonna put them on our wet paper, just like we did before. All right, here we go. Okay. I like to start at the bottom. I don't really know exactly why. I think I just like the way that I can see if I put it around the edges and I watch the way that the pigment disperses throughout the water, then I have a really good idea of where I want to go ahead and throw more pigment later. So this one, because it's a foreground image, I'm actually going to make the inner part of my hill dark rather than the upper part like I was doing in the background. So I'm going to move this paint around a little bit just so it kind of goes where I want it to. Just, you can do that just kind of by tapping if you can see what I'm doing here. Just tapping my brush where I want the paint to go, kind of. And then the water will take it the rest of the way, which is my favorite part of watercolor painting. Now because we do want the inner part of the tree to be a little bit darker, and then I'm just going to kind of give it like a note of it being shadowed. I'm going to use some more of that gray that we used last time. And make some of that and then add that to the wash that we already have. So here we go. I'm going to add that into my wash. Boop, 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 boop. Please ignore me. I have always sung while painting. Oh, I just realized you can't quite see that as well as I'd hoped. There we go. You can do this if you have a palette kind of like mine. I've got these trays here on my palette and you can mix within them. You see I've dotted different things so I can see what colors they were on the white. Um, but you do not have to. And if you're like me and you don't want to get your set super duper messy, having one of these little paint mixer situations is super helpful. All right, here we go. And so see, that's a very slightly darker color than the rest. And by putting that in there, we're going to give it the idea of shadows and textures within the hill. Here. Gently. It's kind of a cheater way to, to shade, but I'm all about finding different ways to do things that are easier, that make more sense, and then they create a product that you can be really proud of. I never thought I would be good at watercolors. I really truly didn't until I started looking into doing it this way. And I have been super impressed with the results of the work that I've done um, with them. So there we go. That is the hill. And much like the last time, and this just happens with the way that the paper might bend, you see how I have these puddles right here? I'm going to use a piece of paper towel. You can even use a tissue. A tissue works. And uh, soak up the pigment there. And because it's so wet and watery, it's really going to disappear quick. And you don't have to worry too much about having some weird splotch on your hill where there wouldn't be a splotch on your hill if your paper hadn't bent. So I'm going to pull those up and then I'm going to kind of just use a much drier brush than I normally would for this to push that stuff around a little bit so that you don't see the, the line increase from where I used my paper towel to soak up that pigment. You don't, we don't want to see that. See, there's a little line there. I get the water. So my paintbrush is pretty dry. I'm just kind of move it around. Bring, 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 bring. Then you're going to not have that area there anymore. And the paper does dry really quickly. So that's nice. Um, what we're going to be doing then is going to be painting the tree. And we're going to want that to be a pretty dark green. Because we want it to stand out from the greens behind it. So I'll start mixing up. Hey everyone. All right, this is our second video in this particular series because my camera fell down. 
So I've mixed up a darker green color here to do the tree and it actually gave us an opportunity to see it because the um, painting got dry while I was trying to figure out what the heck was happening with my camera here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to flood the tree. And don't worry too much about weird outlines or anything like that. I'm not worried about them. My water's getting a little bit green, which is okay because this tree part is going to be green. But if you were painting something else, you might want to take this opportunity to go and switch your water out. This is okay if this water's green because the tree, like I said, it's going to be right on it. Uh oh, so this is a bad problem. My water went where I didn't want it. But yet again, that's the nice thing about your uh, paper towel, your handy dandy one right here. Stop that up. Don't put pigment in that part quite yet, and you'll be pretty good. Mistakes happen, but the cool thing about watercolors is that it doesn't feel like it's forgiving, but it is so forgiving. Um, you can mop up your mess some water on top of it, paint right over it, and nobody will even know you had a problem. Okay, got a little drop of green there, nobody will know. All right, here we go. There is the green here. And just because of the way this paper is laying, I know that I'm going to end up with a puddle up at the tip of the tree. That's okay. We're going to ignore it for now. So yeah, as we, we put this pigment in, you can see that there's a lot of different fun to be had playing with the shades and concentrations of your color in watercolors. And I think that is really and truly, I think I said it last time, but I mean it, and I'm going to say it this time as well, my favorite part of painting with watercolor is that you get to play so much with the different ways that things look. It's like, well, there's not a whole lot of difference here. Well, just wait, there will be. I'm just making sure that I have paint all the places I think that there needs to be paint on this tree. And you'll notice that I did get a little right here. It did flood in a place I didn't want it to. But again, that's all right. We're just going to wait that out. And I'm going to take my handy dandy sopper upper and sop up some of the paint here and here where it's puddling on the canvas. That done, make it go away. Some of it though I kind of want because it gives it that translucent quality that you get from watercolors. Um, and that things in certain spots just don't look exactly like the things in other spots and that's okay. All right, so this is where I'm going to switch my paintbrushes. And I'm going to switch it to a slightly smaller paintbrush. That's fun. And I'm going to add into my dark pigment up there I'm going to add some of my gray again. And when we had our disastrous fall there a second to go with my camera, I don't know what happened to my gray. <laughs> I think this is it. So we're going to go ahead and see if that's the bad boy I want. Always scary. And actually I'm going to use a little bit of brown. Always scary when your camera falls on your painting in the middle of showing somebody how to do it. And that is exactly what just happened. All right, so that little bit of brown and gray has left me a very dark color. And I'm going to pull it out. So there's a little bit of it on my brush. I'm going to just do this on the background. And this like little lines is going to give us the illusion of trees going over that back hill. And we're going to do them over here too as well. And make sure that when you're doing this, your lines are not following the hill exactly. They are going to be going straight up and down. 
just the way tree lines do. All right, so we've added that. And you say, well, Sharon, it's not going to blend in very well. Actually, it will. Get some clean water on your brush and go like this. Kind of scrub it in there along the edges of that tree line that you just painted. And voila, they blend in. Isn't that neat? That's one of my favorite watercolor tricks I've learned so far. There you go. So there you have it. There's a tree line that is trees. Isn't that neat? I think it's neat. Um, we can do the same thing, and I would for this right here. Um, we don't even need a different color. Uh, but what I would like to, to let you know to be careful to do is not actually bring it all the way over because this is in front so the trees are going to be bigger. So if I put some trees right here, I don't want to pull it into this part of the painting because that would really mess up any sort of perspective that we have on this not, <laughs> not accurate painting that we've got going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some here. Oops, there's too much water on that brush. So I dab it off on my handy dandy piece of paper. And then I'm going to kind of just let it fade off into nothing. Just like that. Ta-da! And then this, because it's nice and wet, I've already got it nice and wet accidentally, but it'll, we'll use it to our advantage. Just blend it right in. And now you have trees back there as well. So we're basically just waiting for these, this part of the tree to dry. Now, if you notice over here, I have something that sort of looks like it wants to be another hill. And so I'm going to let it be another, another hill. And I'm going to do the same situation right here. Sometimes you just want to wait and see the way your paint dries and say, oh, hey, look, I can put one there too. Same concept. Nice watery paint, blend it in. If it looks like it's not going to blend in all on its own, get your brush wet with just plain water and scrub it in. Just like that. Cool, huh? So now I've got a bunch of different trees. All right, we're going to finish this painting up next time because this has taken a little while and we need to wait for our puddles to dry. Um, so as you can see, compared to last time, we have a lot more extra fun stuff. And then once this flood here dries, then we'll add some detail into the tree, we'll add the trunk, and our painting will be finished. So stay tuned for the next time, and it'll be a great big time. Thanks for watching, thanks for putting up with my camera fall in two videos, and I will see you again um, next week. Have a good one. Bye. Alright everyone, thanks for bearing with the two videos, and maybe like a smidge of slightly missing information. All I did was mix a color, I think. Um, had a pretty weird issue with my camera stand this particular time, so I apologize for any discontinuity, but I think that it ended up being okay. Thanks for sticking in for the long haul again. This is an almost 20 minute program, and that's a long time on a live video on Facebook, so thanks for sticking around. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll get that painting finished pretty quickly. Um, it's just that next week we have our regularly scheduled stamping program, so register for that and uh, join me and Shannon next week. All right, until I get to see you guys again, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making, everybody. Have a great night, okay? Bye.